Ladies and gentlemen, the return of Megan Mayo. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Is that how you're supposed to do it? I don't know. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you for the education. I've just been coming here for like seven months. You'd think I'd have it down, but oh well. All right. Let's get this party started, shall we? Um, so I went to the movies the other day to see that new Sarah Palin movie, uh, Undefeated. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, I thought it should have been called uh, Uncompleted. Um, that, great. Two people are watching the news. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, and you guys are going to vote, right? <laughs> uh, well, um, I heard that uh, Michelle Bachman got jealous and not to be outdone. She's doing her own movie now, actually. Um, it's called Manchurian Candidate. Um, <laughs> why thank you <laughs> um, while I was there um, they had some previews from some new movies coming out and I saw and I wish this was a joke um, like I made it up but um, there's Battleship the movie coming out yeah Liam Neeson is on it no! yeah no! yes it's someone better check on his career because <laughs> I think he's committing it suicide here slowly but surely that's bad. I mean, do you want to walk out of a movie and go, um, I like the game better? <laughs> it's not good. I also saw a preview for the new Twilight movie. All right. Yeah. Oh, I'm the only one excited. <laughs> it it's going to be in 3D. That's why I'm so excited. Yeah. But don't worry, fans. The characters are still one dimensional. That's right. Fuck Bella Swan, right? <laughs> that bitch. <laughs> um, I was watching the History Channel the other day, and this isn't history, so I'm not quite sure why it was on there, but they, were, they had a show on about conspiracies, and they had a guy on there who was swearing that the moon landing was a government conspiracy, and it was filmed in a, a you know, Hollywood sound booth. And I was like, I don't know. Do you guys remember special effects from the 1960s? Like, Neil Armstrong would have been wrapped in foil. The moon would have been made out of cheese. <laughs> That's until I heard that George Lucas was re-releasing it in HD. As long as Han Solo shoots first, I'm okay, guys. You are my favorite crowd in the entire world. <laughs> uh, I've decided that I'm starting, going to start using the secret to get what I want out of life. Um, for those of you who don't know the secret, and I should say it the secret because then it's not a secret anymore if I say it out loud, but basically you think about what you want instead of working for it, and it magically comes to you <laughs> through the universe. I'm not quite sure how it works, but uh, I'm using it to go back to school, guys. Yeah. This time next year, I'm going to be at Hogwarts. Yeah. Jealous? <laughs> I've been going on a lot of interviews lately, um, and I really hate going to them. I mean, it's just a bunch of BS and posturing. Um, you're sitting across the table from someone who's not even interested in what you have to say, and you know, you're itchy and uncomfortable, because they say dress for the job you want, and a Starfleet uniform is not the best thing. <laughs> you have pictures from two weeks ago. I was wearing my science officer outfit. <laughs> um, and then they asked me, like, they don't even want honest answers, you know. Um, like, they asked me what my greatest weakness was, and I told them bullets. <laughs> I still got the job. Yeah, thanks, Mom. She was the hiring manager. My mom is a property manager, so that means when I was born, um, I wasn't so much birthed as given an eviction notice. <laughs> I'm glad you like that one. I just wrote that one. That makes me feel good. <laughs> Let's see. I just wrote this one, too. Let's see how you guys feel about this one. My, since my mom's a property manager, she's always buying houses, and my stepdad has to sign for the houses, too. He has to co-sign for all of them, and he hates doing it. And he's a, but he's a math major, so I made it really easy for him. I just say, sign, co-sign, co-sign, sign, co-sign, co-sign, sign, sign. <laughs> all his signatures look like this. <laughs> 
I can't tell you how happy I am right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see how this one goes. Okay, let's see. Let me give me a moment here to compose myself. <clears throat> oh, this is it. Uh, America hates fat people. This is my proof. Um, there is a show on television where the winner is still called the biggest loser <laughs> because they're fat. Okay. There's more to it. Don't worry. That's not it. I know you guys were, I was losing you guys. Um, another reason I know that America hates fat people is when you go into the store to buy pants, um, where's the skinny bitch jeans? Right here. Where are the fat girl pants? All the way down at the bottom, guys. <laughs> Have you, uh, no one here has bought size 16 pants before? I find that hard to believe. <laughs> It's like, I don't do exercises. I, if I wanted to do squats, I would have already done them. <laughs> this is how I, this is why I needed to buy new pants in the first place, is I was reaching for a Twinkie. <laughs> and they split. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep your advice in mind. Um, I met my husband on the internet. Um, he said he was a real beefcake but it turns out the cake was a lie. <laughs> yeah. He likes to date nerd girls, and I asked him why. And he said it was because uh, you know they like to role play. <laughs> we do, I play a monk in bed. <laughs> Dex check. Uh, we used to play video games together. Like, they used to bring us together. Now they only break us apart. Um, we used to play Mortal Kombat. Now we only play Marital Kombat. <laughs> We're actually marriage counseling right now. Um, he says it's because I cheat and because I beat him. I think he should just get better at Halo. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. He should learn those maps like the back of my hand is all I'm saying. <laughs> Headshot. <laughs> he doesn't like it when I uh, I teabag him at the after the kill. That's what really gets him. <laughs> you like that bitch? <laughs> Positivity pill. Okay, suppository. Whatever. How are we supposed to take it again? Um, <laughs> my husband's a an English major, and he writes like real stuff. Like he writes novels and fantasies and stuff like that. I'm just a comedy writer, right? I'm up here making video game jokes is basically what I'm doing, right? So when we fight over email, it's not really fair. Like, he wrote me an email today that said, Megan, your thoughts are like oysters, slimy to the touch, and potentially hazardous to your health. I know. Yeah, like, what are you supposed to say to that? Um, and it took me eight hours, but I came up with the perfect response, and it's, yeah, well, um, you have a small dick. I win again. <laughs> Speaking of dicks, um, my husband's been trying to get me into literature by having me read Moby Dick, which is a terrible place to start. I mean, that book is like its name, long and hard, is all I'm saying. It's not good. It's not good. I really did try to read it, though. Um, halfway th I, I did try. Like, I went and got the book on tape, and I thought, I got it read by Sir Patrick Stewart, right? I'm like, if, yeah. If you're going to listen to anybody, it better be Captain Picard, right? But halfway through, he said, fuck it, and the rest was just Led Zeppelin lyrics. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Um, I thought my mother-in-law loved me until the other day. I, heard her, I overheard her telling uh, my father-in-law that she wished I would have uh, rabies. I know. What a bitch, right? And I got really upset, and I ran out the back door, um, and I got bitten by a, a raccoon. We had to go to the hospital. And I said, are you happy now? Are you happy? I probably have rabies. And she looks at me, and she goes, babies. I can't wait for you to have babies. <laughs> hey, I'm just happy. I'd, I, I might have done something I would have regretted if I heard her correctly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Under advisement. Let's see here. Uh, I guess I better wrap this up here soon. Um, I was reading on the internet, they had this article. For those of you who don't know, I work at Starbucks. 
Um, yes. All right. Oh, you're going to love this joke then. Did you see that article where they were talking about Starbucks secret menu? Yes. Yeah, it was just shit they made up. Yes. Yeah, it was like syrups we don't even have anymore. And if, by the way, if you come in and ask for a Fruit Loops Frappuccino, I'm going to punch you in your face. I'm just telling you right now. I'm, I'm just letting you know. And if you want spit in your Frappuccino, that's a good way to get it. But um, it made us, uh, at our store, we were inventing new drinks to, because they were so silly. Um, re -re we renamed the Americano, which is two shots of espresso and some water. We call it the Bin Laden. <laughs> all right, all right, here's the other one. Okay, three shots, of co uh, three shots of espresso and a coffee. We call it a JFK. Neither of them? Okay, all right. You guys, you guys said it. Since there's a barista in the audience, I am going to read this. I wasn't going to, but I'm going to now. Um, a couple weeks ago, I saw um, Cypher, and she really inspired me. And I wrote my own poem about working at Starbucks, and it's called Barista's Revenge. All right. Hell hath no fury, like a tip jar ignored. You think you're safe, but you'll get yours. Racing heart, shortness of breath insomnia, and restlessness. Blurry vision, I bet you're mad. You asked for decaf. Oops, my bad. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> That's how poets bow, right? I don't know how it works. All right, I'm gonna tell you one more and I'll get out of here because I think I'm way over five minutes. My bad. Um, and the best part about working at Starbucks is I work in the drive-thru and what most people don't know is that there's a camera at the order window and I can see in your car yeah a lot of you are really nervous right now right <laughs> yeah one morning I'm working and it's like 5 30 in the morning and <laughs> I hear the little beep in the headphones we just open and I'm turning I'm like how can I help you and I look into the monitor and there is a chick giving a dude a blowjob at the Starbucks drive-thru. <laughs> Not smoking. <laughs> I mean, I know Starbucks is expensive, ladies, but... Uh, <laughs> this is an In-N-Out burger. <laughs> Come on. Like, they, they finally pull up to the window. They order, they pull up to the window, and I don't even want to look this guy in the eye, right? Like, I'm trying to get his stuff ready, and I see him reach out the window, and I think he has his money, but I don't have his coffee ready yet. So I reach out to get his money, and we just kind of meet in the middle. And we're, like, holding hands outside the drive through window. And I don't know what to do, and I freak out. So I just go, um, so uh, do you come here often? <laughs> yeah. Before I go, um, I'm sorry, Russ, but you, been, uh, you reminded me when you were up here before. I just want to thank you guys for giving me such an awesome room to practice comedy in. When I first came here, I was thinking about quitting, um, and y'all have really inspired me to keep going, and I'm not going to cry, I promise. Um, <laughs> this is absolutely the best audience. You never yell at me for doing the same stuff over and over again, and you always encourage me on my new stuff. So um, I just want to thank you guys so much. Thank you.